Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. Well, besieged Human Services Minister Roger Yench has survived another day of no confidence motions after more allegations about a youth program in the Northern Territory came to light. Labor and the Greens argue footage of a youth behind the wheel of a car at the site proves it's time to bring the children home. On a dusty red road far from My family's been messaging me lately. They've been saying I haven't changed. Well, to be honest, maybe I haven't changed. Behind the wheel is a young person alleged to be involved in the Ellen Brahmini program. I just stole it. F***ing Toyota Troopy. Cops come, I'm chasing it. The youth claims to be speeding. It's a community area. Cops come. I don't give a f Today in Parliament, the Human Services Minister was forced to explain the incident, reportedly from September. My advice is that the young person involved um, did not steal the car. Um, it was a... Uh, more of a joyride. The Premier says he became aware of the video yesterday. Roger Yench wasn't so sure. When did you become aware of the incident involving a child at Brahmini? Uh, when I first became aware of the uh, Facebook post in question, uh, I will seek further advice on you that. You don't remember? I ask you again, when did you become aware of this incident? He later revealed he became aware of it on October 7. Labor and the Greens want the children brought home. Peter Gutwin is sticking by it. If I thought that the best way to deal with this was to reach in and take those children immediately out of that program, I would do that. But that is not the advice that I am receiving. Today, Roger Yench survived two no-confidence bids. Eyes 11, nose 13, therefore the nose have it. Six Tasmanian children are at the Northern Territory program. It's currently under review by the state government. A mother with a different child at the site wants him home. I want to know that he's OK, that I can see him, that I can phone call him, you know, that he's actually monitored. No one goes, no one goes up to um, the Brahmini program. All eyes are on it now. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Police have revealed a 59-year-old North Hobart man died following a crash at Newtown yesterday afternoon. Authorities say the driver of a white van hit the rear of a taxi while travelling down Risdon Road before crossing onto the incorrect side of the street and colliding with a wall. Initial investigations suggest the van driver suffered a medical condition. Members of the public attempted to provide first aid but he died at the scene. None of the five people in the taxi sustained significant injuries. A 31-year-old has pleaded not guilty over the alleged murder of a Mornington man. Police say Caleb Adams stabbed a man known to him in the neck in the early hours of Monday morning. Our reporter, Ruby Kamein, has the details. Here at Hobart's Magistrates Court, Caleb Adams pleaded not guilty over the alleged fatal stabbing of a 34-year-old man. Police say Ashton Frederick Jones was found with a stab wound to his neck in a unit complex car park at Mornington early Monday morning. He died at the scene. Authorities stealing off the property on Carbine Street as a thorough investigation was launched. Mornington man Caleb Adams was charged with murder yesterday afternoon. This morning he entered a plea of not guilty. The 31-year-old was remanded in custody and is expected to appear in Hobart Supreme Court in February. Fruit fly larvae from Queensland have been found in passion fruit bought from a Launceston supermarket. Biosecurity Tasmania confirming the matter reported on Monday as a single post-border detection. It's ruling out an outbreak with the state's pest-free area status remaining unaffected. Tracing activities and review of the fumigation process are currently being undertaken. The public is being urged to remain vigilant and report anything unusual found in fruit. Well, more than a month after a live export ship sank off the coast of Japan, there's hope a Tasmanian guide who was on board could still be alive. Debris from the ship has been found. And families and friends of William Mainprize are holding on to the possibility he may have made it to an island nearby. 
Life rings, parts of the ship and the canopy of a life raft washed up on shore. Evidence that Will's friend of eight years says is enough to keep searching. I think there's a, a, a high probability if they made it to an island and so that's why we're concentrating our search on the islands. Harry Morrison was one of the last people to speak to Will when Golf Livestock 1 hit trouble as a result of a typhoon on September 2. He said he was scared. He said he was really scared because, you know, the boat was taking on water and the waves were so huge and it was not. And, um, yeah, he was scared, but he was, you know, he wasn't in his cabin asleep. He was up and ready. He is fundraising to continue the search with the Australian government withdrawing support. It's heart-wrenching in the fact that there is no answers and there's no closure and um, there's just been so much more information that keeps coming to light, but yet the, the action from the Australian government has been so little, which is, you know, making it even more difficult. Donations can be made through the GoFundMe website. Elizabeth O'Neill, 7 Tasmania News. One of the country's largest breweries, West End in South Australia, is closing its doors after 160 years in operation. The brewery's owner, Lyon, says Bogues in Launceston is safe for now, but it was considered in a wide-ranging review. Much like how Bogues is an icon of Tasmania's north, West End has long been the multi-face of SA. But the historic brewery is calling last drinks after running at just half capacity recently. The line has too much capacity and we have to make some tough decisions. The pandemic delivered the final dagger with draft beer sales plummeting, but a broader shift by consumers away from beer has been hurting for years. It's now at its lowest per capita consumption ever recorded in Australia. Lyon says it looked at every scenario, including its breweries outside SA, before swinging the axe on West End. We periodically look at the whole network. No, but did you specifically we've looked at closing any of your other breweries? We've looked at every single brewing footprint we have, and we've ran lots and lots of scenarios, and unfortunately, this scenario is the one that comes up. Lyon has told Seven Tasmania there are no plans to close Bogues anytime soon, but the brewery is unlikely to pick up any more production, with 4X in Queensland and Tui's in New South Wales set to take on the extra volume from West End. In 2016, Lyon slashed 39 jobs at Bogues, disaster averted this time around. Tom Johnson, Seven Tasmania News. As local authorities continue to dispose of pilot whales following the country's largest ever mass stranding, there have been some positive sights. Pods of other playful whales have been spotted safely migrating through Tasmanian waters by rafts of lucky onlookers. A remarkable sight. This humpback whale launching into the air on Bruni Island south for passengers on a Pennycott Wilderness Journeys cruise to sea. There were two or three whales just constantly in, up, out of the water, um, putting their fins around, jumping out, um, giving us an absolute show. Um, so it was the best display I've seen. Over the past few weeks, many out on the water have managed to spy whales migrating along Tasmania's coast. It's really, really exciting. It just kind of, it's a real buzz that kind of hits the boat. You know, even if we see a, a fin or a blow out in the distance, it's just like a, an immediate kind of sense. You know, everyone's looking out for it and it's a, a really nice feel. A mesmerising first for a Devonport local out fishing near Ulverston. We've seen dolphins and things like that out there quite regularly, but um, to see whales, it was, was just amazing. Wildlife experts say October is peak time to see more pods passing through our seas. At the moment they're heading south, they're moving from their breeding grounds in tropical waters um, down to their southern ocean feeding grounds. A refreshing sight after a harrowing month for crews rescuing and disposing more than 400 pilot whales stranded near Strawn. A tiring job still yet to be finished. There are some washing in that we are still disposing of. Um, crews that, that were on the ground are, are tired, so they've, they've had a bit of rest and recovery um, and we're moving into to debriefs now. With the mass stranding, though rare in scale, hope to shape rescue efforts in the future. We may never see one again this big, but 
we're, uh, we'll definitely have more mass strandings down the track um, and we'll use the learnings from this last event um, to help us manage those events. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. They're a place for the elderly and people with a disability to connect, but social hubs were forced to shut their doors earlier this year as a result of COVID. They're set to reopen next week and staff say there will be plenty of meals and activities for clients to enjoy. Sharing a cuppa around a kitchen table, a simple pleasure, but for many, these social hubs are their connection to the community. I'm not a person that goes around the neighbours, but I love it here. When they were forced to shut down as a result of COVID, Anne says she missed the company. But I love gardening, so I occupied myself with gardening and housework. And, um, but, but I kept in touch with my friends on the phone. Community-based support provides services for the elderly and people living with a disability. And when the virus hit, it had to adapt. Some clients were too afraid to leave their homes, of course, during the, uh, the lockdown, and many of them weren't, weren't eating properly. Hello, Jane. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks, darling. Launching a meal delivery service, cooking up almost 6,000 meals for residents across the state. Now that will continue, but the organisation is excited to reopen the social hubs next week, with COVID safe measures in place. Hi Ian, how are you going? Oh, I'm going pretty good. Oh, that's, take it, that's good, yeah. just take it to Richard today. Yeah, Some are just day tours, others are activities, craft based, a whole host of things that our clients can get involved in. This will be Anne's sixth year with the centre and she's looking forward to getting out and about. Yes, I do. I love to go around and look at the op shops and things like that, yes, in any activity I can. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. Well, students may have tolerated their studies being delivered virtually in 2020, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. The University of Tasmania has today announced it will be holding summer graduation ceremonies in person, including for those who missed out in July. A town and gown parade won't be possible, but the university will be holding several smaller events to satisfy COVID restrictions. A young woman who survived a brain tumour as a child is urging Tasmanians to dig deep this National Bandana Day. The pandemic is impacting the annual event by forcing Canteen to move its fundraising efforts online this year. A trip to the doctor left Georgia Richardson's mother shell-shocked. The original plan was just an eye appointment and then 24 hours later we found out that I was actually going to have brain surgery to remove a mass. It led to the diagnosis of a brain tumour followed by seven rounds of chemo. Coming to terms with the disease was a tough task for Georgia and feeling alone even more so. It was certainly quite scary because as a five-year-old you don't understand quite what's going on. I grew up in a, quite a small town where I was the only person, um, the only young person with cancer so that was quite a big thing to overcome and a bit isolating at times. Now 21, she's in remission and training to become a primary school teacher. But the cancer has left her blind in one eye. The charity canteen has played a vital role in supporting her through her cancer journey. I've met people that have had the same tumour as me after like 15 years of not knowing anyone. I've made connections with people that under, really understand what it's like. And I've gotten the support and the skills to be able to cope and overcome the trauma that I went through. With National Bandana Day on October 30, Tasmanians are being urged to dig deep and don one of the charity's colourful headpieces. We find that young people have up to six times as much experience of depression, anxiety if they've been impacted by cancer. Bandanas can be bought through the Canteen website. Elizabeth O'Neill, 7 Tasmania News. Well, there's a blue tint to the TSL Awards this year with the Launceston Football Club taking out three more accolades. Also following four inclusions in the Team of the Year, the Blues are on a high heading into this weekend's Northern Showdown Grand Final. Sweeping up Lauderdale before cleaning up the TSL Awards. That's a beautiful goal! RACT Insurance Player of the Year Joby Harper has had a stellar season, but he's keen to credit team performance. You don't unable to win things like this if you're in a, in a weaker side usually so um, being in a stronger side and shows us playing on the weekend. 
the upcoming grand final, still the Launceston Football Club captain's focus. Yeah, at the moment, it's mainly this weekend that I'm looking at and um, they'll probably sink in a little bit more if we win the Premiership. A statistically superb season, Harper led the competition in clearances and hard ball gets, while also top five in disposals, inside 50s and score involvements. Hudson medalist as the competition's leading goal kicker, Dylan Riley's happy with Harper's service. Pretty big honour. Um, probably the main thing, if it wasn't for my actual teammates kicking the ball to me, I probably wouldn't have won it, so a lot of credit for them guys. A call from the awards namesake, the legendary Peter Hudson, a prize in itself. You know, that was good, he's a good bloke to talk to. He just gave me a call to obviously congratulate me um, and wish the team all the best for the weekend as well. Overcoming the disappointment of playing a season in the Development League, Hamish Leadham played some of his best footy in 2020. You go back and play as, as well as you can and, and playing with a whole different um, group of people than what I have done the last couple of years has been exciting. Um, watching a, a lot of young players go into to different players than what they started the year out. Their toughest challenge still lies ahead, ending the North Launceston dynasty. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Preparations are underway for the SFLW Grand Final Friday night at North Hobart Oval. Unbeaten Claremont is looking to finish off a perfect season, but Hewenville believes it can pull off an upset. There is the extra pressure. I guess, like I said before, we've got everything to lose, um, but it's very exciting. It's a great opportunity. We set ourselves up, so we're going to go out, you know, 100%. We're going into the game with um, maximum determination, and it's pretty obvious that. Looking at the 2020 season for us, we are going into it as the underdogs and we're hoping the underdogs can take it out this year. Meanwhile, the government is sticking to its guns on crowd size, saying capacity will be limited to 1,000 people for both the men's and women's deciders this weekend. Good evening. Temperatures close to or above average today. Hobart and Launceston 18, Burnie 15 and Devonport 16 degrees. Strawn warmed up to 21 today. Bushy Park reached 19, Grove 18, Friendly Beaches and Flinders Island 17, King Island and Smithton 16, Low Head and St Helens 15. Low level cumulus cloud covered the north and east today. Some high cloud attempted to stream across the south later in the day. An approaching cold front has the cloud massing to our west. Some mid-level clouds sat over Queensland and just a spot of low cloud over southern tip of WA. Tomorrow the cold front approaches as the high moves over the Tasman Sea, running a ridge up the eastern seaboard as another tracks over the bite from the west. North to north easterlies will turn nor northwesterly late tomorrow at around 20 to 30 knots and then later in the day again a further shift to the southwest. Strong wind warning is in place for all Tasmanian coastal waters. Also a minor flood warning for the Jordan River and a warning to sheep graziers for parts of the northwest, midlands, east coast and southeast. Hobart tomorrow 19 degrees, showers becoming windy, showery for Signet 17 the top and 18 the high for New Norfolk. Launceston. Showers clearing, becoming windy though, 18 the top, 16 the high for Devonport with a shower clearing later, same for Campbelltown, 18 the maximum. Burnie showers clearing late, 16 the top, 17 for Strawn, 16 the high for Smithton. St Helens tomorrow, 20 degrees with showers developing later, Swansea the same but 21 degrees, 21 also for Fingal. On Friday, mainly fine with winds tending northeasterly, and to the weekend, possible showers over the north and east on Saturday afternoon and evening, mainly fine elsewhere, and on Sunday a 60% chance of a shower over the east, fine and partly cloudy for the rest of the state. Partly cloudy in Perth, showers developing over Adelaide and Melbourne, mostly sunny in Canberra and Sydney, partly cloudy and 27 in Brisbane. Mostly cloudy in Hobart, 17 at the moment, 14 in Launceston, Devonport cloudy and 13 degrees. So cold front coming, Kim, bit of rain over the next day or so, won't be uh, long lived, only a short lived cold front. Uh, luckily too, because it's so green around the state at the moment. And of course when summer arrives, all this green that we have now will uh, dry right off and uh, that's going to exacerbate the uh, fire danger. Mm, well indeed, let's hope for a little bit more rain before we hit that summer season. Thanks Murph, that is your news for this Wednesday. Thanks for your company this evening. Good night.